Hi everyone, I'm Aura O'Brien with ACAP Advisors and Accountants and welcome to another edition of the ACAP Recap where we go behind the blog and talk about some of the more pressing issues that you have or some of the main questions you have. And today we're going to talk about the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act that went into effect on June 5th, 2020. This is a new law that basically made the Paycheck Protection Plan that went into effect a couple of months ago a lot more lenient and made it easier for businesses to comply because there's a lot of confusion among businesses on whether or not when they get this Paycheck Protection Plan loan, if they qualify for the forgiveness. Uh, several of the provisions of the PPP plan initially got changed so that way it's a little bit more easier. So for example, one of the things that the original Paycheck Protection Plan had was you had to use the money for payroll within an eight week, eight week period. And if you didn't, then the money was not uh, forgiven. But with this new Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act, they've extended that to actually 24 weeks. So instead of having eight weeks to use the money for payroll, now you have 24 weeks to use the money. So a big benefit. The other provision of the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act is that it lowers the threshold of how much of the money could be used on payroll. So in the original act, you had to use at least 75% of the money on payroll, otherwise it would not be forgiven. This new act actually lowers that threshold to 60%. So now as long as if you use 60% of the money for payroll, then you're still eligible for having that money forgiven. Because if you, re if you remember, this is actually a loan, it's not a grant, unless you meet certain conditions, then it becomes forgivable. Uh, one of the other provisions is that you had, if it became a loan and was not forgiven, you had two years to pay back the loan. Uh, they've extended that now with the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act to make it up to five years. So now you have a little bit longer time to pay back that loan if it indeed becomes non-forgivable. Uh, uh, and then one of the other provisions that uh, the CARES Act would not let you do if you received PPP funding was that you were not allowed to participate in the payroll deferral program. This essentially allowed companies to defer the payroll tax that they owed over a two-year period. It didn't, uh, it, it didn't uh, eliminate the payroll tax, but what it allowed you to do was basically spread that payroll tax over a two-year period. And the original PPP program said, if you received PPP money, then you are not eligible to participate in the payroll tax deferral program. However, the new Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act eliminates that, and now you're still eligible to participate in that payroll deferral program. The real benefit of this new Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act comes from the ability to rehire individuals. There was a, a lot of confusion. I think there still continues to be, what if as an employer, you are trying to rehire these employees and they don't want to come back? Or your business has slowed down to a point where you don't need these people anymore. You're not able to, to rehire them for uh, a loss of business or due to additional compliance that uh, you have to meet. Well, the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act really fixed that, that uh, limitation of it. So now as an employer, if you show good faith and you document that you were unable to rehire these individuals and unable to hire them to get to a service level uh, you had previously because of compliance reasons, then you're still eligible to have that PPP loan forgiven. So all in all, this Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act is a win-win for businesses because there's really no part of the, of the provision that or the law that uh, makes it detrimental for businesses to comply. If you liked any of our videos or if you like our videos, please subscribe uh, where we're going to offer a lot more informational tips and a lot more informational um, uh, videos on how to improve your business, on taxes, on investments. And if there's a topic that we did not cover or we do not cover, please leave a comment in the comment section and we'll try to get back to them. Uh, lastly, please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Thank you again for joining us for the ACAP Recap. I'm Aura Ogorian. I'm a certified financial planner and a CPA.